Okay. So we have already learned arc length. You did it in your warm-up. You've done it on previous homework assignments. The difference now is that the angle can be given to you in a radian measure and not a degree measure. So at the top of the page, it actually should say arc length with the angle given in terms of a radian. Okay? Because angles, as well as your arcs, okay, we can have a radian measure for an arc, but when we refer to arc length, that's a distance. Okay? So this is a review at the top of the page. So given this central angle of 120 and the radius is 9, in degrees, I can say the measure of QS is 120 because a central angle from our unit is congruent to the arc that it intercepts. The inscribed angle is half, which we saw last class. So to the right, when we measure in a linear unit, that's distance or length. So that's circumference. How long is that curve? So we look at how much of the circle. So we've got 120 out of a total of 360 degrees times circumference, which is pi d or 2 pi r. So on your calculator, take 120 over 360. Remember to use your grouping symbols, because the calculator follows order of operations, times 2 pi r, or 18 pi. Bless you. Give me the exact answer, and then an approximation. So exact means in terms of pi. One twenty over three sixty reduces to a third. So then you can look at a third of eighteen pi, which is six pi. So an exact answer would be six pi inches. Approximating, let's round it to the nearest tenth, be 18.8 inches. So an approximated answer, just like with radians, there's no pi. You have to be careful because now that we're dealing with angles and radians, radians have pi. Circumference has pi. So it can get a little bit confusing as to what measurement you put where. Okay? In the middle section, I just want you to remember from last class, this is what we did above. The central angle is, that wasn't last class, that was a theorem from last unit. However, 180 degrees is equivalent to what radian measure? Pi. Where 360 is 2 pi. So that's an easy conversion. And as I mentioned during the warm-up today, if you struggle with any of these questions where it gives you an angle in radians, you can always convert it to degrees and then do the same thing we just did above. Okay? So if you want to, the last bullet, these are the conversion factors which are on the state test. If I want an answer in radians, we have to multiply the degree measure by pi over 180. Because I want the 180 to cancel, I want pi in my answer. If we want an answer that's in degrees at the end, we want the radians to cancel, so pi is down here, and we multiply by 180 over pi. So if I look at question number one, doesn't say to find the length of an arc yet. We'll get, that, we'll get to that on the back. It just wants the value of theta in terms of radians and degrees. So if I'm given an arc measured as pi over 2 radians, what's the central angle? 90 degrees, okay, or how many radians? Pi over 2. It's the same. And the easiest conversion to go from radians to degrees is to substitute 180 for pi, and 180 over 2 is 90, okay? The next one, so going from the angle to the arc, I want to get rid of the S though, because in the formula for arc length they use S, so let's call this X. So if I'm given a central angle of pi over 3, then X is also going to be pi over 3 
radians. But what's that as a degree measure for the arc? 180 divided by 3 is 60. So, or 60 degrees. So, two different measurements for angles and arc um, arcs. When I talk about arc length on the next page, I already have this filled in because this is a review. When I talk about length, that's your conference. When I use degrees, that means theta is in degrees, the angle, okay? When I look at arc length using radians, that means my theta is going to be measured in radians or the angle, okay? We could essentially copy this down over here, okay? It's the same thing, but what would you change the 360 to? How many, in a radian measure, 360 is equivalent to 2 pi. So S equals theta over 2 pi times circumference. That's all it is, okay? Circumference, though, is 2 pi r. So what can I do or what cancels out when I multiply theta over 2 pi times 2 pi r? The two pi's cancel. So s is equal to theta times r. We call this SOAR, okay? This kind of looks like an O. So we can use s equals theta r only when you're working with theta in radians, okay? So s equals theta r. Just again to review on the left, rounded answers is approximation where an exact answer is in terms of pi. I want you to take this equation and solve it for theta and solve it for r. And what do you get? Put it in the box. So in terms of theta, theta is equivalent to, who can give me the answer? How do you solve for theta? S equals theta times r. So Nick? The ratio of the arc length to the radius. Yeah. And then if I were to solve for the radius, S over theta. You can always use this. You don't have to if it says find the angle. You don't have to use this formula. Find the radius. You don't have to use this. You can always use this. But this is how you can quickly find the angle given um, the radius in your arc length. So let's draw a picture for number three. If you want to use your compass to draw a perfect circle, you can. Let's draw a picture to represent what's going on. You don't ever have to draw your picture to scale. All right, I drew two pictures, okay, just to show you that whether, you can do it one of two ways. The first method is to keep everything in terms of radians. So when it's in terms of radians, you can use SOAR, S equals theta R. S stands for the arc length. So if I use S equals theta R, I can only do that when the angle is in terms of radians. So all I have to do is take 3 pi over 4, that's my angle, and multiply it by the radius. So times 3, and put this over 1, 3 pi times 3? 9 pi, 4 times 1, 4. So my arc length is 9 pi over 4, not radians. Arc length is in terms of, what's my unit? Feet. 
So that's going to be a common mistake. Because you see pi, you're going to think you have to be in terms of radians, but arc length is in terms of a linear measure, or feet. This is, however, one more formula to memorize. So if I wanted to do it in terms of degrees, what is 3 times 180 over 4? Nick? 135. Okay? So if I want to do it in terms of degrees, it's 135 out of a full circle 360 times 2 pi r. So it's 135 over 360 times 6 pi. So on your calculator, we want to leave pi in the answer. Do 135 times 6 all over 360, and what do you get? What's the, de what's the fraction? If you're doing it on the calculator, you get a decimal. Go math, enter, enter, and what's the fraction you get? What's that? 9 over 4 pi. You get the same answer. So some of you, if you struggle with the concept, take your radian measure, convert it to degrees, and do it the way we've been doing it since the beginning of the year. Okay? Whatever way you do it, you're going to get the same answer. Number four, it says the tip of a pendulum after swinging through an arc of two and a half radians. Now, this is an approximation. There's no pi here for the radian measure. It's just 2.5 radians. It forms an arc whose length is 10 inches. Find the length of the pendulum. Well, can someone demonstrate what a pendulum does or what it looks like? There you go. Thank you, Sean. Okay, so <laughs> take your pen or pencil or your ruler and you take and you swing it back and forth holding your finger steady or not moving that part but moving that. Swings back and forth so you have the straight edge, right? It goes out to the left but the bottom part, the pencil or the end of the ruler forms a straight segment or a curved segment? Curved, so a curved, so this is what it looks like. So here's the point which you're holding the pendulum, it's out here. It swings around right, and that forms a sector of a circle. Okay? So the tip of the pendulum, it swings through an arc of two and a half radians. It says it forms an arc whose length is 10 inches. Find the length of the pendulum. The length of the pendulum is actually the radius of the circle, correct? However, how can we, what makes it confusing is that you have both of these measurements right here for the arc. Where can you get rid of one and move it to another spot? Yeah. The 2.5 radians I can move to where? The central angle. Very good. So now if I want to find the radius, my angle's in terms of radians, so I can use SOAR. S equals theta r, 10 is my arc length, my angle is 2 and a half times r. Divide 10 by 2 and a half and the radius is how many inches? 4. All right, the next one. The picture's there. It says in the diagram the circle shown has a radius of 8 and theta intercepts an arc whose length is 14 centimeters. What is the measure of the angle in radians? Since I'm looking for the angle in radians, I can use SOAR. So the arc length is 14 pi equals theta times the radius 8. You can set it up like we did on the previous page we solved for theta, but I just wrote this equation out and then I'm just going to substitute and solve. Divide by 8, and we can't divide 14 by 8, but we can reduce it. So 14 and 8, or any other GCF besides 2? No. So the greatest common factor is 2, so 7 pi over 8. Am I writing radians or centimeters? Radians. Because when you have pi, you could be dealing with circumference or radians. Since it said find the angle, theta, in radians, that's a radian measure. 
Now, area. Oh, it is 7 pi over 4. Thank you. Did I at least say 4? No. We'll have to go back and listen to the video. <laughs> 7 or 14 divided by 2 is 7. 8 divided by 2 is 4. So 7 fourths. Um, the next part, what we ended up doing here earlier today, and what I'm going to probably encourage you guys to do, is when you're doing area, there is a formula. It's not as easy to memorize, such as SOAR. So I would suggest that we convert every radian measure to a degree measure and do it the same way we've been doing it. I will show you the formula because some of you will use it. So if I look at area, which is theta, again, radians, I changed to 2 pi. When you look at the pi r squared, the only thing that cancels here is the pi. So you end up with pi over 2, or 1 half, I mean theta. So you end up with theta over 2, 1 half theta, plus r squared. That's not as easy to memorize as SOAR. So what I would suggest is, in these questions, change the radian measure to degrees. So draw your circle. We have a sector, radius is 6 inches. And the central angle is 6 fifths pi. So let's change it to degrees. 6 times 180 over 5. And what do we get for a degree measure? Two sixteen is right. So we're going to do it the same way we've been doing it. So 216 out of 360 times pi r squared. So it's on your calculator, 216 over 360 times 36 pi. Now, don't multiply by the pi because it didn't tell us that we had to round, so we're going to leave it exact. So do your 216 over 30, or 360 times 36, then do your math enter enter to get the reduced answer. And we are in square inches. So what do we get for a final answer? For It's an improper fraction because 216 times 36 is bigger than 360. So what's the improper fraction for... Yeah, Sean? 108 over 5.